So today we're going to do some terrestrial science so we can hopefully make our way to... Where is it? That thing over there, the moon. The mud. And there's a whole lot of places on Kerbin that we have yet to visit that hold some really good science for us. So to make that easy, we're going to make a science plane with all the plane parts that we unlocked. Like a cockpit. We just got to find a cockpit that works with us like this one because it's lighter than that one. And it's got a very pointy nose on it. That means it goes fast, right? Mm -hmm. And then we need to make sure that the science bits go on it like there. And now we bring in the structural fuselage because that's empty. And we need to make sure the plane is nice and light. Probably two of these on here and then in the middle we'll have a methalox tank or is the methane better i never really looked at what these different fuel types do good choice for upper stage they're both the same it's just different fuel types i think methane might actually be better for terrestrial exploration doesn't matter for poisoning the atmosphere we're doing science here and then we get the wings on here like so now we have a glorified lawn dart kind of a callback to the first video if you think about it <laughs> big like that yeah lawn darts in space now this really is looking like a auto rocket kit. So the main thing that's going to make this work is the ability to take off and land again. To do that, we'll need some wheels and make sure they're rotated correctly, but these things are weird. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to place them like this and then use a special rotate tool to make this go a lot faster because that's a lot of headache trying to figure out the button control things. Can you rotate, please? Thank you. Something like that should work. Although there's a lot of wing back here. We should probably put these more towards the edge of the wings. This is a very small craft. I'm just noticing this. But then on the front, we need some landing gear like so. Except that's at a very bad angle for the landing gear. Look at how steep that is. My goodness. But there's really no easy way to do this unless we move the wings down. Is that allowed? It kind of is, but that really doesn't look stable. So we'll just undo all that. Better idea. If the front wheel has to be shorter, then we'll just use a smaller landing gear, except it's also at an angle. There, that, that actually looks really good right there. That's pretty level, at least as level as we can get it. Now, the tricky part is going to be getting this thing off the ground. We have jet engines, should be really good for us. We're also gonna need a couple of air intakes. How big are the jet engines actually? They're about that big, which could go right here then, if I set this properly. There we go. This plane's also gonna need a stabilizer on the back. And this thing looks very not good. Center of pressure, okay, that's, isn't that what you want? I'm pretty sure that's what you want. Where's the center of mass? Okay, that might be a little too far back. There's too much control going on here. But that's an easy fix as long as we do one of these maneuvers, I think. And make sure they're actually set properly. Yeah, the center of mass and lift are supposed to have a good relationship, right? And then center of thrust. Oh yeah, easy. Now, where can we put the air intake? Probably on the wings? Unless I need something to connect to. Which would be a good thing for these fuselages to be on the wings for. Okay, now it's starting to look like a jet. We just set some intakes on there. And would it actually be better if we... Doesn't matter. If we get two fuselages like this. And then we strap the jet engines on the back. Oh, okay. That's some extra power right there. But we should probably make these, instead of fuselages, the, the uh, methane tanks. That should hold us over a lot better, except the colors are rotated wrong, so that's gonna bother me. There we go. And we should probably do this in the correct order. That might help our situation out, because I have no idea what that's doing there. We need symmetry. I don't know why it's so easy to figure out rockets, but planes are just a whole nother ball game. There, now we get the jet engines on there properly. Do we need one in the middle? I don't think we need one in the middle. Also, how much fuel does this thing even have? It's got 86,000 Delta V, and there's really no way to check if that's a doable thing. We should be good, though. And then we'll also need a whole lot of solar panels on here because we only have the small ones right now. But we can just place a lot of those on the wings. And then that should give us all the electrical power that we need because if it only generates 0.1 energy every second, then having... More than 10 of these should give us the electrical storage needed because we'll need to send a lot of reports back to base. And then we'll also make sure we have some radial parachutes so we can slow ourselves down. The only thing I'm not sure about is how to cap off the end here. It's like, how do you close the back of an airplane if you don't have a cargo door? Do you put another nose on the back? I mean, I guess if you want a cat-dog situation. Oh, we should probably also get a couple batteries on here. That seems like an important thing to have. Those will sit nicely on the back of the craft right here. Do you think they care that the wings are clipping through the jet engine? I'm sure nothing bad will happen from that. And the door should be low enough too that our brave pilot 
Tim should be able to climb in and out of it with ease so we can take ground samples. All right, I'm just gonna slap a jet engine back there because I don't know what else to put and now we should be able to take off, hopefully. Oh, except we have a problem. We have too much mass going on in the back of the plane. Also, what sort of angle are the jet engines going at? Let's just correct that a bit. Perfect. And maybe also slide them slightly forward. Ooh, perfect. That shifted the center of mass ahead of the lift thing. Okay, so this thing is gonna be very touchy. I think this is good for a first test. So let's, whoa, camera. Okay, let's see how we do. The, uh-huh, the fins are doing funky things because that's how they roll. And as expected, we're pretty level. We're a little bit angled up, but I think that's ideal. All right, but the main thing we're here for is to get this thing off the ground. So let's rip up the engines. All right, it's looking pretty stable. It's curving a bit to the left, but that's how planes do. Oh, but that was going way to the side. Ah! Okay, yep, just skip into this runway. This one was better. No, we're going into the trees. Okay, get some tree samples, will ya? <laughs> Oh, okay, we just took a sample of the light post, cool. Okay, so we had good speed, but we didn't have good rotation to get off the ground. So I'm guessing we need more mass towards the front or just something to move this back. What if we had smaller wings coupled back here? Okay, that's a little better. Maybe those are too small. That sort of works. What we could also do is just have another blank fuselage up to the front here. That moves the center of mass back, I mean forward, and then the wings can also go up like this. So that, okay, this is actually looking like a proper plane now. Maybe that's my mistake. And because these are further back, that allows us to make these wings a little bit bigger. Maybe instead of an empty fuselage, we need a fuel tank because we need to move the center of mass forward. And somehow I made this perfectly balanced. Okay, there we go. A couple of control fins in the back and that moves the aerodynamics back a good amount. So we should hopefully take off now. I'll turn off SAS right here so I'll have a little more control. Okay, good speed, good direction. Uh, whoa, too much direction, too much direction. Just gotta straighten it out and get enough lift. You're not getting enough lift. Oh, there it is, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, easy, easy does it. Yes, we're off the ground. Excellent, okay, pulling the landing gear. Okay, okay, maybe now we bring in SAS. Woo, we're fine. Look at this thing. It's a thing of beauty with some feet in the front. Whoa, whoa, giving Tim some whiplash with these gentle movements. All right, where is our first stop? What direction are we pointing, actually? We're pointing towards the water. This is a long trek across the ocean here. And we have good airflow going and a lot of liquid fuel to the engines. So the methane was a good option. And we will go faster if we get more altitude. So let's just take this thing up into the air. This is beautiful. We're way out of line of the runway, but we're up in the air. We do need to be careful about how high we go though, because we need to keep good airflow to the engines. But I think we can level out like so. Just keep it pointing up and then probably level out at 5,000 meters. Is that cruising altitude? I have no idea what cruising altitude is. I've only been in a plane like twice. Oh, but now we're going down. Nope, gotta keep constant control of this thing, I guess. SAS, I don't want you pointing at the ground. Get it up, get up, get up. There we go. What if I just turn off SAS? Will that level it out? Oh, oh, oh. okay, just careful, careful. Can you just fly, please? Fly, you fool. All right, SAS will go back on and we'll just be constantly monitoring it. Now the Space Center is just a squint on the horizon, especially because the sun is right there. Ooh, that's a pretty picture. I have no idea if they brought in the first person camera to this, but I bet it would look really cool from inside the cockpit. Maybe they do, let's see, that's the camera button. Ooh, a chase camera, that's some action right there. Oh, now it's looking like a flight simulator. I'm having fun here. Horizon, that's also good. All right, it doesn't look like we get a first person view, but that's okay. I'm also amazed at how low the fuel cost is. All right, this is a whole lot of ocean here. Would it be dangerous if I sped up time just a little bit to make this flight go faster? Oh, hey, there's the moon. I wish you were there in the intro. And I just noticed a problem. We're flying east and the sun sets in the west. So we probably should have had this pointed the other way, but truthfully, we only need the sun to transmit data. And I think it might be time to turn the plane because the areas I wanna explore are up here and we can't really do anything with the water right now. So let's just try a simple 
turn maneuver like this. It's a little difficult to control. Maybe we turn down the thrust. We are currently going down, but that's fine. We have room to spare and making a gentle banking motion like this with some additional speed to get ourselves up. Here we go. And now we're pointing north level out and now we're gaining altitude. Okay. Oh, we can actually just have this thing point north. Would that be too dangerous? It, whoa, it is actually looking pretty good, but it's a bit too downward direction. So we'll just ignore that and then make sure we keep our altitude. Tim's having a great time, look at him. Okay, now comes the sketchy part, speeding up time. And it looks like we're still able to actually keep it controlled, even at four times speed. The movements are a lot more touchy, but we're still going north and we're just having a bob while we do it flying casually. Is this what it looks like? This is always what I imagine it looked like. Okay, but now we're actually losing altitude. Why is that? But now we're getting it back. That's good. And there's land again. Okay, so now we can actually try landing this thing because I'm pretty sure beach was one of the areas that was unique instead of like desert. So I could probably come in for a landing on that stretch of dirt right there. Just gotta make sure that we actually get there. Excellent. Turn a little bit more if you please. If you would be oh so kind, maybe we just seen a little more tilt like that. Lack of stellar exposure, that's fine. There we go, there we go, and level out. Okay, just a little bit more. This needs a bigger control surface in the back is I think the issue. That was absolutely a sentence, don't worry about it. Okay, now we're more so pointed at the sandbank, just being really aggressive about it. It's still amazing how far away that is actually, but we are getting there. Okay, it looks like there's some dunes there. That's gonna be an issue, but we do need to start slowing down, except I don't wanna do that too early. This is sketchy. Okay, now we're getting close to it. Okay, so let's cut the throttle back and just glide on in and probably deploy the landing gear. That'd be a good step to follow. There we go. Let's hopefully hit a flat part. This looks pretty flat right there. Just gliding on in. This is pretty majestic actually. Right past that last rise of sand there. Good, very good, excellent. And as soon as we touch down, we'll deploy the parachutes. And, oh, oh, graceful, graceful, oh! Not graceful enough. Maybe we need more runway and more flatness. Okay, going in gentle. Landing gear is not out, forgot that this time, whoops. Okay, but it's looking very nice. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Oh, gotta be so gentle about this. Okay, and then, nope. What? It might be a matter of airspeed. We're currently going 350 meters per second. So if we cut the throttle early and just glide in, that should really drop our speed a good amount. Also, this is the most level the plane has ever flown. Why are you doing this now? Hopefully we make it to the actual beach. It looks like we're going straight to the water. Uh-oh, just gotta be very careful about our angle of approach, which is very steep right now. Gotta bring it to near zero, okay. Looking good. This area is looking pretty flat as well. Need to slow down our rate of descent. Oh, the landing gear. Forgot the landing gear. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, easy, gentle, gentle, gentle. Oh, not gentle enough. We just lost the front wheels. All right, uh, parachutes. Let's bring you out and oh, we're rolling. We're rolling with, oh, we actually still have a wheel. Wow, slow down, slow down. I'm scared to put on the brakes. Oh, I think we got it. I think we got it. I'm scared to let go of the pull up button though. <laughs> I know how fast these things can take a dive, literally. And it's a good thing we found all this space to land because this is taking a while. Okay, I let go of the pull up button so we should be able to apply the brakes safely. Oh, aha, we did it. We landed a plane. <laughs> We lost the wheel in the process, but you know, we still have one and Tim is excited about it. Take a step outside and oh, why back are you rolling? Another, another. Why is this thing rolling? Go back in it. Brakes. Brakes need to stay on. Okay, it's not rolling anymore, so that's a good thing. Let go. Oh yeah, look at us. We landed a plane, baby. And now we can do some science right at the beach location. Oh yeah, good samples there. Good thing there's a lot more places to explore. Let's get back in the shuttle if you can Reach that, can you jump and grab it? Grab it, that, you had it. Come on, Tim, I believe in you. You should be able to board a plane. Of all the things to be locked behind a tech tree, a simple ladder had to be one of them. All right, can you jump on the wheel? Whoa, whoa. Okay, maybe not jump on the wheel. Are we gonna need to bring in the flight suit for this? Tim, we came all this way, get back in the plane. There we go. Okay, Tim, you had me worried there. Oh, that a research reports, really? 
Wow. We get credit just for returning to the plane, but also our plane is rolling backwards at an interesting rate. So let's repack the parachutes, both of them. Repack. Quickly turn on the thrusters so we can go in the proper direction. Also, what just disconnected? Oh, it wasn't going fast enough for air intake. Okay, now the wheel is causing some issues. I guess we're just gonna ramp this baby. Well, maybe not. Okay, now we put all this stuff on here for a reason. So let's just transfer the data. Uses up quite a bit of power and the sun is currently setting. That's not good. There's a mountainous area up here that would be very difficult to land. There's probably enough flat over here to land something. But now our challenge is to get this off the ground again with only one wheel. Well, first things first, we have to repack the parachutes. Except now our challenge is to get this thing off the ground. So we need to take off the brakes. It likes to roll backwards. Can we use this to our advantage? Just curve the plane this way. We went from four legs down to three, and we are still rolling backwards, even though we're turning this thing completely around. This thing has a lot of momentum. And we're going up in speed, going up 100, and that's the water. <laughs> Now it's a seaplane. Well, uh, this plane isn't going anywhere, so let's just recover it and launch again. Keep you note of all the science points we got. Ooh, that actually unlocks new things in the R&D. Orbital rocketry. That's gonna be good for us. And the next unlock is the moon landing. Ooh, I can't wait. So now we can launch this again with a better idea of where we're going and the front directly in our faces. Tim is loving that, I can tell. I'm not too sure why the planes don't like to go just straight down the runway. They don't make this easy, but it takes just hopping to the other one and we're up in the air again. And my goodness, that is bright. I would not want to wake up to that. So let's just curve immediately because that definitely isn't something that can go terribly wrong. And get ourselves oriented into a northerly direction. We're pretty far away from it. What would happen if I turn this on? It's kind of doing the thing, and it's very much doing the thing. Bringing it straight north level with the horizon, which is not good for us, but we can work with it. It does look like it's actually keeping the control surfaces tilted up slightly, so it might be good at flying level like this. Let's speed up time and just make this go faster, and we're definitely going towards the ground now. Time to take control. And Tim is just headbanging the whole while. <laughs> yeah, Tim definitely seems like a rocker sort of Kerman. And we need to make sure we actually get a good amount of altitude because the Earth travels faster below you when you're higher in the air for some reason or something like that. I don't know how it works. I finished physics in high school. All this stuff is a little bit above me. Get it? All right, looking ahead, this is sort of the mountainous region, and I am definitely not landing a plane in here. So I'll just forego this area and head straight to the North Pole. And there's a lot of samples being taken because of the sciencey thing, but they're not worth anything because they're only of the atmosphere. And we already have that data. I wish there was a button on here to just level this thing out because having to constantly click this back and forth is a little tedious. But we're doing good. And now we get a view of how small the plane actually is in comparison to everything. But that is so cool seeing the ground move that fast. Maybe the C stands for cruise because Tim is definitely looking like a top gun pilot here. And surprisingly, it is a struggle to keep this thing flying at 5,000 meters. There must be just enough thrust to keep this thing up. I kind of forgot to check the ratio on that. But hey, with enough science and determination, we can get a plane off the ground which is more than I've done in this game regarding planes. Okay, let's just take a quick look, see. Oh yeah, we're making really good headway. We're about halfway there. And it's so cool that Tim is flying high enough that the stars are appearing above the atmosphere. Oh, that is amazing. It'd be really cool to fly through one of those clouds too. Maybe I should try that in this bunch up here. As we are starting to fly over, is this water again? Oh yeah, it's water. I'm not sure how good clouds are for the air intakes, but this is gonna be a pretty cool moment. So I'm gonna do it anyway. And whoosh, oh, okay, I had my fun. It's one of my bucket list items once I retire is to learn how to fly a plane because this is just some of the coolest stuff. And it would probably go a lot better than this with a lot less whiplash. And now we're back flying over more mountains. This is such a scenic flight. And we're about a country's distance away from the ice caps. Hopefully the ice caps are something you can actually land on and it's not like Moho where you just go right through it. And I'm worried that these are more than just clouds over the ice caps and they're like actual mountains. We're gonna have to find a really, really flat spot to land this. But if last time was any indication, then we should be able to get through this mostly intact. Oh, look at that. Those are the ice caps. Oh, look at that. We got a couple like glacier things. They're gonna snap off and rise the ocean level. This huh? raises an interesting problem. I'm not seeing any flat spots right away, but that is 
Oh, that is honestly cool. That pun was a little less intended. So we'll just keep cruising like this until we find somewhere flat to land. That is flat, but it's not big enough. So what makes these not safe, I wonder? Are they safe now? Oh yeah, they're safe now. Okay, let's gently slow down. Okay, two of them deployed and then four deployed. Nice. But we are still going entirely nose down. Well, it's better than nothing. So Tim is just going to get very comfortable staring at the ground as it rapidly approaches him. Hopefully not too fast. Oh, uh-oh. We, uh, this isn't the way I wanted to land. At least Tim can get out of it and conduct a ground sample extraction process. Just like that. Perfect. He got a nice little capsule full of ice. Hopefully it doesn't melt. But I think there was another thing is running a crew observation. That might give more science. Ah, oh, we already have that experiment. Okay. <laughs> I think he sees something over in that way. Oh yeah, that, that's the sun. I don't think we can really <laughs> take this thing off again. But what we can do is recover it, grab those science points. And then once we take off again and buzz the tower while we're at it, now he's really feeling like Tom Cruise here. Woo! Oh, but we got to pull up again. Eee! <laughs> Buzzing way more than the tower there. That was fun. I feel like we could try landing this as long as the area is flat enough. There is a bunch of trees, but those don't really exist. So if we're just careful about our descent like we usually try to be. Oh, but this area is looking pretty hilly too. I'm starting to see the change in elevation. So let's just glide on over closer to the mountain so Tim doesn't have as far to climb. And maybe just kick up the engines to make sure that we actually get there. Just a very low flying altitude. All right, good enough. Cut the engines. And now's a good time to deploy parachutes. There we go. Not sure why they didn't deploy the first time, but it works now. And ever so gently right into a tree. Oh, it's actually landing properly this time. Hey, how about that? Okay, put on the brakes. Put on the brakes. Whoop. <laughs> really abrupt braking there. But we are really getting the hang of landing this plane. Good job, Tim. Take some of that research with you. Straight from the highlands. And, oh, it was the highlands last time. Well, we didn't get the mountains, so start walking, Tim. And you have a long way to go. Even go at four times speed. <laughs> <laughs> He's not making any real progress, but man, does it look funny to watch him run. <laughs> okay, different plan. All right, you get back in the thing. And we should be able to conduct the science using the science tube. There we go. Expose the goo. Nicely done. More science. And we just repack all the parachutes so they're not dragging behind us, even though I don't think they are. And what we'll do is just try to gently roll the plane over to the point. Yes, we're still gaining speed. Okay, they can do it. Where's the mountains? <gasps> the mountains. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, stop. Wait for us to roll casually and break. Oh, beautiful stop. Good job, Tim. So we can just do a little research in the science disc to begin with. Excellent. That's a sample right there. And now Tim can take a sample of the ground. Perfect. It's amazing how much science that's worth. That already bumps our sample size to 28 and the data to 24. Really good. So just hop on back in there, Tim, if you can. And then we'll, we'll stop this thing before it rolls away. Yes, the science is ours. And we're looking at 116 science points. That gives us enough to unlock moon landing. Oh yes, I'm looking forward to this. Ooh, and I think we have enough to buy something else. Maybe a landing leg would be good because we did get the lander. Oh, there's a landing leg there. Never mind. But we'll probably need something to help the rocket. So why don't we go for specialized decoupling with the separatrons? I love these things. Or we'll probably need some reaction control, but we don't have enough there. A thought just occurred to me. Research location here specifically says Kerbal Space Center. Can Tim step outside and just grab a sample straight from the Space Center? Oh my gosh, he's doing it. He's actually doing it. He's stepping out onto the runway grabbing some of that dirt and we can turn it in for <laughs> we can turn it in for science oh my goodness does the grass over here count as space center step on it tim we're on a schedule getting as close as we can so your ears are just full of the pitter patter of kerbal steps and people say the flash is the fastest thing alive here we go now we're in the grassland so we can conduct some research here oh my goodness <laughs> Can't believe I didn't do this sooner. This is so dumb. But hey, another sample. And we can take some more data because we're in a crew observation status check. And that should have generated, yeah, science report. 
Good grief. All right, Mr. Science Aficionado. Get on back into your space plane, science plane thing. And we'll just recover this right here. That's so much more science for us. Oh, these silly little Kerbals. So probably the next good thing to unlock is the reaction control system because we're gonna need a lot of fine tuning control to land this on the moon. And then with the rest of it, we can get something good for us like specialized decoupling or probably small payloads, something. Oh, maybe power management because these things are not good. And there's a ladder there too. And specialized decoupling can still be bought. Good. Oh, and there's docking. Oh, that'd be fun. Also, the only things in tier four are power launchers and tiny engines. But I noticed this scroll bar at the bottom and there's actually a lot more science ahead of us. Well, it's a good thing there's a vast expanse of space to explore, but I think we've covered pretty much everywhere on the terrestrial side of things. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see other places being explored, then be sure to let me know. Hopefully next time we'll land on the moon or do something, whatever it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sub to intern. And thanks to the channel members, including Bread, Mr. Cripple One, Ancient Elixir One, Corby Farm, Dakota C, Donamoto, Vivian X, Muffin Suffer, Lucas S, Spider Sex, The Real Nickname, Hateful Harold, Peggy Sue, Drupalong, TJ, Seriously Sarcastic, Angel, Lily, and The Miner Within.